Greetings, 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 everyone. This is Antonio C. Wicks, your Chief Encouragement Officer, coming to you with another video that includes a tool that you can use and an invitation tonight on Zoom. So let's jump right into this. Um, what you see in front of you is an Excel spreadsheet, and this is a budget worksheet. And I want to tell you up front, if you want this worksheet, email me at president at antoniowicks.com okay and i'll put it in the description so you'll have it as well but guys I, I had a worksheet that i loved that i used several years ago and i misplaced it i think i had it on a thumb drive and i lost it i mean this is years and years ago and i have been looking and looking and looking and looking for a budget worksheet that was in excel that was equal to the quality of the budget worksheet that I had before and and I will be I want to keep this 100 with you <laughs> this worksheet is 10 times better than the one that I had now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through some of the categories with you and then I'll tell you at the end what I love most about this worksheet okay so let's look here first off if you look at the categories guys this this sheet is so detailed it's ridiculous okay um, obviously you're gonna have a breakdown up front of income and expenses and I've, I've kind of tweaked some of the numbers uh, to protect the innocent because what I did was I just made a copy of my budget worksheet and uh, changed the numbers around just so you can see how it works okay so we start off with income and expenses total income total expenses and then uh, as we get down into this we're going to see how, let's see if I can get my mouse here. Whoa, do we lose it? Okay, there we go. Okay, so as we get into this, what you're going to see is that there are so many categories. There's really not going to be any reason for you to have to use anything besides this. So let, let's get into it. The first section is income, and underneath income, you've got seven different categories and I'm not gonna read them off because they're right here on the screen okay so if you want to take a look at them just pause the video okay so this is your income section okay once you have your income there you're gonna move down the very next sections is expenses for saving this budget worksheet encourages you to save not just for the purpose of saving in your savings account, but for emergencies, uh, replacement, uh, retirement, investments that are not for retirement, and even an educational fund for your children, okay? And so this is huge because when I sit down with clients, this is the number one hurdle that I find. They, they feel that financial literacy is important, the concepts that I teach them make sense to them, but when it comes down to them being able to make a decision about moving forward, there's a little bit of hesitancy. And, and in all honesty, that's universal for anyone because most people love having conversations about where they want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. But the challenge is not point B for most people. The challenge is point A. Now, we have an analysis that we put together. It's free of charge. Other companies charge over a thousand bucks for it, but that analysis basically is a financial GPS, okay? Now that is included with the services of someone becoming a client. But this video is about before you become a client, before you get life insurance and investments and get a, a full blown plan, this is to address the hesitancy that most people have in moving forward because everyone wants a plan. Every family, I believe, deserves a plan, but the average person, that includes me and you, is not going to be comfortable moving forward if we don't know where our current budget is. And and this, I think that part of the part of the challenge is, is that back in the day, okay. This is back in the Stone Ages, okay? I'm talking 60s, 70s, 80s. People balanced 
their um, their budget from, man, I wish I had one here. Yeah, they would use, I'm gonna see if I can pull this out, guys, okay? They would go in to the bank or they would get this in the mail and they would just, you know, pop out the old checkbook, right? And then just go into the register and, uh, you know, and just document everything right here. But guess what? Guess what the challenge is with that now, guys? Nobody's ordering checks. Okay, who do you think of? I want you to just think right now. Who do you know personally that has checks, paper checks, personal checks that they write out at the grocery store, okay? Guys, it is so rare that not only do most people not order checks, but when you are in line and you're waiting for more than two or three minutes, if you look down at that cash register and you see somebody bent over like this, you say to yourself, now I know that person ain't writing no check. This is 2022. <laughs> okay. Seriously, this is this is how we think, guys. And so we, we gotta have something that we can use in place of that that is not only as accurate, but it's gotta be in real time. In other words, if it's not connected to our phone, there's a really good chance that most people are not gonna update it. Okay? Now, there are apps out there that are gonna do budgeting and things like that, but listen, those apps only work when they're linked to your checking account, and they do not account for cash that you receive in your hand, okay? Unless you have to input, all right? This gets everything down to the penny, but I'm gonna tell you the most powerful part about this uh, budget worksheet once we get to the end of the video, okay? Now, as you can see here, we got savings, and then we got home expenses, all right um everything is covered here so let's see so we got four eight twelve thirteen categories if you include the other under home expenses that you can put in guys that is huge because you can pinpoint now the next section is daily living and we've got three six nine ten categories under daily living Okay, and you can see the expenses there. If you can't read them all, don't worry about it. Go back, pause the video, rewind, what have you. And then you have the children's section, okay? Now, if you can see, I changed the amounts, but I didn't change the names, okay? Now, I've got, some of you all that know me know, I have a big family, okay? And and I have each of my, uh, my daughters that are under the age of 18, they, uh, I have them uh, as their contracted employees. And so I actually pay them for things that they do. Now, I'm not talking about chores, okay? If any kids are watching this, you're not supposed to get paid for cleaning your room, okay? That, that That's part of your room and board, okay? If you don't pay rent, you're supposed to clean the area where you sleep, clean up behind yourself if you, after you eat, okay? And, and take care of your own personal responsibilities, making the bed, doing your laundry, that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing chore, doing things within the household outside of your responsibilities. So each of them have, uh, um, they, they have pay periods for that and they have uh, uh, opportunities to do additional chores to make additional money, okay? And so that's, that's the children's section for me but I also have in their clothing because they're in private school, so we have to buy uniforms. And then uh, you have you have medical there uh, as well, okay? Now, for me personally, that's if we have to use uh, an emergency outpatient place or you know somewhere like, uh, I'm in Texas, so we use like Texas Med Clinic, you know, these emergency 24-hour clinics you have to go into. I put that stuff there. If I put money into a health savings account, I put that there, okay? That's separate from health insurance, okay? But again, that is the way I set up my budget worksheet. You don't have to do yours that way. All right. Now, let's go down to transportation. Now, here in this section, we have six categories. Okay. Six. So look there. And um, in that uh, also, I have, again, you know, I've told you about my family. This is just a little bit transparent here. Uh, uh, my daughter takes care of my oldest daughter, Anna takes care of certain uh, errands for me. And those errands involve her using her vehicle. And of course that costs gas. So what I have is I have a weekly amount that I allocate towards her for gas. And again, I've gone in and changed the amounts 
but but what's important to note here is that I have this allocated under transportation because even though she's my daughter, this is an expense that she's incurring to help me. So I categorize this as separate money for her for gas. All right. Now, as we go down into the next section, this is health. Now, this is where uh, you can put uh, different medical expenses. If like the uh, best example would be like if you go to the doctor's office, your health insurance is coming out of your paycheck. OK, so that's not going to be broken out into a category here. But if you have a copay, if you're paying out of pocket for a prescription uh, and also health club dues, if you have a gym membership, you pop that right in here. OK, if there's an emergency, you pop that in here. But again, five categories that you can use under health and then for insurance. OK, now this is auto health, homeowners insurance, life insurance. Now for me, health comes out of a paycheck. Uh, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, uh, uh, life insurance comes from the account, checking account, and then uh, car insurance as well. But health comes out of a paycheck. So I'm going to, I'm just going to leave that blank. Okay. And then down underneath that, the next category is education. So we got tuition, books, uh, music lessons. Um, I actually, my, my kids are in a, a volleyball clinic. I actually need to put that expense in there. Uh, nobody's taking music lessons right now. My children are musicians, but by the grace of God, they're self-taught. Um, so, so that's kind of cool that we have that education section there. So we can put stuff like that in that category, okay? And then of course, uh, gifts given, charitable donations. Those of you that tithe and you belong to a church or an organization where you give a portion of your earnings, I think it's a great spiritual principle. It's a good uh, financial principle as well. Lots of millionaires and billionaires, they do uh, donate 10% or more to charity. 10% is kind of the starting point. Okay. Uh, and also for those of you that, that are uh, uh, readers, read the Bible or followers of Christ, whatever you want to call it, you know about the tithe and the purpose of that. Okay. And then you have other under charitable giving as well. Now, obligations. Okay. Now this is student loans, credit card debt, other loans, alimony, child support, okay? Those of you that uh, are paying child support, uh, taxes, you know, all of those things, if you're paying them separately and they come out of your debit account, you can record those here. But if they're already in your paycheck, you don't need to put them back here, okay? Because what we're trying to do is to identify the actual money that's flowing into the account and identify money that's flowing out of your checking account, right? And then of course, last but not least, uh, not, well, we shouldn't say last but not least, we got another category. I have business expenses here, okay? And I use the heck out of this because as a business owner, I wanna make sure I got everything allocated that I can get a deduction for, which is another reason that I recommend my clients start a business. Even if they take on a silent partnership with me, working in finance, they can just take classes online to get licenses with the state, federal government, uh, to work in finance but what's cool about that is is once you start a business so many things that you do already are now tax deductions guys being a business owner in the united states of america there are so many advantages you understand when you have a small business you can write off dry cleaning meals that you have uh, mileage from your vehicle a portion of your mortgage if you own a home your cell phone guys there it's just I could go on and on internet all types of stuff okay but again just giving you some detail on the business expense section and uh, underneath that we have entertainment now here I think they've got about 11 areas listed entertainment you can put in money that you set aside towards vacation and travel here as well as for toys uh, fun stuff, whatever you consider to be fun. All right, that could be going to Top Golf. It could be going, uh, I don't know, anything you consider recreation. What, what's, what's the other place where they go and uh, it's a, a main event or, or there's another one where you jump up and down air or something. Uh, I don't know, but guys, entertainment, main focus. You wanna put all of that stuff there. And then 
you have pets. I have a dog. We have a dog, uh, Sigmund. Uh, he's, he's a handsome fellow. Some of you guys have seen him. But, you know, expenses there for that. Subscriptions. For those of you that have subscriptions, uh, members of clubs. And uh, that is a, that section. And then we have vacation. Okay. Six categories there. And then we have miscellaneous. So, guys, as you can see, this sheet is so in depth but i'm going to tell you the reason that i love this worksheet this budget sheet the most and i'm going to go back up to the top here and you may say okay you know what well antonio i just got this it's the middle of the year what have you uh how do i do this and and here's what i would say to you you don't have to go back to january and go through your bank account just start in may okay or whatever the current month is started this current month because here's what's cool once you put in all of your income and guys this is going to change on a daily basis because you use your debit card daily right so or weekly at least your income will be shown here and your expenses will be shown here and you will see exactly what's coming in and what's going on but here's what's cool if there is a difference to where you have a surplus. In other words, you have more money in your account that is reflected and it's more than your income total. Guess what? It's going to show up in the prior month. So if your income and expenses, once those are subtracted out, it's going to give you a total, but then it's going to also allocate any additional monies outside of that. And so you'll know, okay, this is what I have in my spending balance. And this is what I can target towards setting up the three accounts that I need to get set up. Now, what are those three accounts? That's what we cover during our one-on-one -on -one overview. And then you can also use that amount to set aside towards your income protection or your life insurance, okay? Now, most of you may say, hey, you know what? I have that through my job. And if you got it, wonderful, hallelujah, keep it, okay? But there are some very specific reasons why you need to have your own plan in addition to what you have through your employer. All right, guys, so again, hit me on email, president at antoniowicks.com and say, hey, I saw the video. Email me that worksheet. I will send you that worksheet and then I will also uh, put you on a, a list with your permission because I want you to be able to have access to new tools that I come out with because it's going to help to get you to the next step on your journey to financial independence, okay? So, with that being said, this evening at 7 p.m. and on Thursday, we have an overview where we discuss financial literacy principles. It's 7 p.m. Central. 8 p.m. Eastern would be 5 p.m. Pacific. So depending on where you are, which coast you're on, link up with us tonight. You'll be able to get some detailed information and then we can set up a, an individual one-on-one -on -one so that we can help you get your game plan in place. Okay, guys, that's all I wanted to cover for this video. Have a great day. God bless. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. We're going to be getting more information to you. Have a great day. God bless.